the Shoshone people who lived in Northwest Wyoming before Europeans arrived had a deeply spiritual relationship with this land. They lived in the shadows of a string of dramatic peaks that they called the Tiwanak, which they considered ancient ancestors to be respected and revered. But in the 1700s, when lonely French trappers arrived in present-day Wyoming, they saw something else in these peaks and gave them the name Teton, or Tetons, which was French for breasts, and reserved the name Grand Teton for the highest peak in the range, a surprisingly salacious name that survives to this day. Perhaps because most English speakers have no idea what Tetons actually means. As some of the youngest peaks in the Rocky Mountain Range, they now serve as the centerpiece of Grand Teton National Park. In 1829, even before the Mormons arrived, a trapper named David Jackson made his camp here, and the area was named Jackson Hole, prospector slang for valley. It stretches along the base of the Tetons for 40 miles. During the Ice Age, a series of glaciers shaped its floor carving basins for a chain of alpine lakes that mirror the mountains and dazzle the eye. Just as this view across Phelps Lake dazzled millionaire John D. Rockefeller Jr. in 1926 when he came here for the first time. Rockefeller was stunned by the beauty of Jackson Hole. He was also dismayed to see that this unique crossroads of earth, water, and sky wasn't being protected or preserved. So he began secretly buying as much land here as he could, over 30,000 acres in all by the early 1940s. He even bought out farms and barns from the valley's Mormon pioneers. This I did, Rockefeller later explained, in order to provide winter feeding for the great quantities of game and to preserve the superlative scenery of the Grand Teton approaches. Rockefeller's plan was to give most of the land to the U.S. government for a new national park. But local ranchers howled when they found out what he was up to and launched a campaign to stop him. In 1943, they even got Congress to turn down Rockefeller's gift of the land. When the millionaire threatened to turn around and sell it on the open market, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt saved the day. Using a loophole in federal law, he accepted the gift, but declared the land a national monument, not a park. In 1950, President Harry S. Truman signed a bill enlarging the area and making the monument into the Grand Teton National Park. Almost 600,000 people visited the very next year, only to discover there were very few places in the valley to stay. So Rockefeller chose a site along the shores of Jackson Lake with one of his favorite views of the Tetons and built a hotel. His Jackson Lake Lodge, with walls of glass to showcase the mountain vistas, has been welcoming visitors since 1955, Rockefeller style. <laughs>